Is the COP26 summit is seen as a crucial moment if we tackle climate change and avoid the worst impacts of global warming. Today, leaders continue to hold talks on saving the planet, including a meeting with Boris Johnson and all the devolved UK ministers as well. Are you any more convinced of the climate emergency after yesterday. In a moment, we'll chat to Ben Harris Quinney, who's chairman of the Bow Group, the world's oldest conservative think tank. I think he'll have very differing views from our first guest, Laura Baldwin. You might know Laura, of course, former Olympic rower, but these days, spokesperson for Extinction Rebellion. She's live in Glasgow. Laura, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Ian. Nice uh, to have you I with us. I should say, Olympic, I should say uh, sailor rather than rower, shouldn't I? Yes. <laughs> happy, <laughs> Thank you. Ha- that's all right. Happy to clap. Well, you might need sailing nautical knowledge if the planet's going in the direction some people see it as. Certainly where I live down in Portland, yes, we are threatened to become an island through sea level rise. So what's going on here? You've seen one day so far, Laura. We've seen world leaders. I mean, politicians are very good at saying a lot of stuff and then going home again. Um, Am I being too cynical here? What did you make of it? I heard the government and other leaders speaking the words that we've been saying for the last three years now since Extinction Rebellion formed that this is an existential threat, that this is an emergency, that our kids will never forgive us if we don't act on this. So they are confessing that we are absolutely on the brink, that this is the last best hope to turn things around. And so hearing that kind of communication has changed my spiel because I was coming up to say those things. And now it's like, okay, we've got to actually act on it and make it happen because an agreement is nothing without action. And so far, our government certainly have spoken and then constantly contradicted their words with their actions throughout even this last year leading up to COP that that we're hosting saying yes you know setting impressive targets they are good targets um but then doing everything that counters what you would need to do to move forward on that so expanding airports to 27 billion for new roads cambo oil field up the road here um flirting with the idea of a coal coal mine like we've got to start acting on it and not just speaking about acting on it but we can have roads can't we because we'll have electric cars so that's okay that's okay you can have roads but expanding them at this point is not the way forward because all the evidence suggests that the more roads there are the more congestion there will be does the whole thing collapse a little bit though laura when we you know i made that uh, announcement about india's net zero target 2070 (laughs) half a century away i mean that's not going to the whole thing will come tumbling down without powerhouses like india and china on board i know you'll be familiar with these arguments but you take the point i mean it's surely it's all or nothing everyone or nothing No, absolutely. You're completely right. So all these targets give us a false sense of time. It's not about a date and time. It's about the remaining carbon budget to keep the world below 1.5 degrees, which we're told is approximately 320 billion tonnes of carbon emissions left to emit before we go over that 1.5 critical threshold. Past that point, we've been hearing from developing nations that are literally going to be sunk under sea. They're not going to exist anymore if we go beyond that point. And so... um, you know, we really need to listen to these scientists that the amount of time that we have left at current rates of emissions, we're using approximately 40 billion tonnes a year, is gone within eight years. So these distant timelines are completely irrelevant. It's all about the remaining budget and sharing that equally amongst the country. So what is the, the what, what's the point then, Laura, where, because I, I said a second ago, I can remember a few years ago, people saying, you know, we've only got until 2020 after that. It's irreversible. It doesn't matter what we do, you can't tackle it. So where, where is that number? What is that date now? We can it started off in it. about 1968, that date, didn't it? It's... Well, absolutely. And we're seeing that already we are in a climate crisis. It's happening now. This summer, we watched the horrific and heartbreaking, catastrophic weather events on every continent of the globe. People died this year. The mm. scientists saying now, nowhere is safe. We've for, for a long time been saying it's all about the global south. It is much about the global south. They are indeed suffering the worst. But we've always had bad weather, Laura. Laura, but b- bad weather used to kill people in the millions. Bad it doesn't weather, anymore. Not a not a cro- apocalyptic floods and fires. I'm watching the news every day, almost weekly at least, and I'm just absolutely horrified by what I'm seeing. It's just like something out of a horror film. 
not something that's really happening now. And it's such a shame that it needs to actually happen to people, for them actually to be the ones affected, to realise that they have to, we have to act on this and this is real. Do you think... Like we, so, sorry to, to talk over you. I was just, do you think in terms of getting these messages out to the public... Do, do politicians miss a trick here? Because, you know, most people listening to this are thinking, how am I going to pay my energy bills? How am I going to feed my family? Can I fill the car up? And if I've had such a rough year, can I go on holiday? And you're here, along with others, saying, actually, it's going to be impossible, and rightly so, to do most of those things. And no, you can't go on holiday. No, I, I don't agree with that. We're not asking for people to go back to the Stone Ages. The holidays, we can staycation, we can use trains that are using electricity. So we can't energy. go on an aeroplane. Is, so that, is that part of so your, your thinking that we shouldn't fly? Currently, with current um, aviation fuels and aviation as it is, currently with everything, like we're absolutely at the, at the last point here. So just the UK's remaining carbon budget of this um, 1.5, our fair share of it, will be gone within the next two and a half to four years if we carry on as we are. You know, when you, you let that sink in, you realise that we need to make some fundamental, massive changes. You, th you think we can turn we around? Fear. I mean, it should be, um, just to answer your question about, I'm... you know, our lifestyles and things, really what we should do is is put um, carbon-intensive uh, movement, you know, ship, uh, cruise ships and, and aviation luxury uh, activities on pause whilst the technologies catch up to enable those things to happen in a really green... So no foreign holidays for a decade, way. maybe. No Tenerife, no... I mean, that's going to collapse an economy, yeah, isn't incredible. it? Incredible. We're, so, we're so clever. Well, that's the thing. So it's all... We all keep hearing about the economy. Of course, that's an important thing in, in the way that we're set up. But we've seen through the COVID crisis that the impossible is possible, that money can be found when it's necessary. What does the, the world... people of... are okay to make incredibly huge sacrifices if they understand that it will help that to safeguard the people that they love and they understand the risks for themselves. So, you know, the changes that we would need to make the, the climate crisis and the environmental crisis as well, we mustn't forget our environment is in a dire straits too, would be nothing as severe as what we went through for COVID. But you if, know, you, if, if you look at, I think what's confusing some people on this one, Laura, is that if you look at what, you know, the various climate reports say, they often point to the very worst case scenario. And even there, they say it's not likely to happen. So are you guys being over apocalyptic in your predictions here? No, well, at 1.5 degrees, we've heard from developing nations, they're going to be underwater, they're going to lose their entire countries. At 1.5 degrees of global overheating, 75% of the coral reefs are predicted to be dead. At two degrees, 99% gone. Like this is going to happen. So when, when would that decade. happen? Give, what's the year then that's predicted, Laura, that that will happen if we did nothing from now? If we carry on as we are, the carbon budget will be used up within the next eight years. The temperature may take longer to actually get up to that figure. But the best case scenario on the IPCC sixth um, report says that it will go over 1.5, but then we draw it back down later in the in the um, in at the end of the century. So 2040 is the date that I've heard. I'm not, you know, I studied science at, at university. I'm an Olympic sailor. I spent my life. I know. I'm not. Listen. World. I'm not. There's I've no. Got, there's no gotcha carbon, moment here. I'm not expecting you have you know, an answer to everything. I, I, but obviously, if you are talking, you know, about a fairly a miserable future if we don't act, it, it, it's right to know a little bit more detail about that you're, you're putting your name to extinction rebellion and lots of people scratch their head and think well, really is there we, the end of the world suddenly out of nowhere it's the end of the world what's going on here well completely that was what i was asking too when i found this out and it was only the beginning of january 2019 that i came to learn that we were in this terrible crisis and since then i've focused everything i can on the problems and also the solutions starting off with all the eco swaps at home and I think that we need to shift the, the focus away from the fear. That we need to fear. We need to understand how bad this is. We need to grieve it. We need to feel it. We need to feel that pain because that will motivate us to act and to change and to make the I, necessary I think that's an interesting. That I think that's an interesting do. point about feeling, then, the, feeling the pain that you feel. Stay, listen, stay there, Laura. Don't, don't disappear. We've got to take a, a pause for some news. We're going to come back as well and hear from Ben Harris-Quinney. I'm sure Ben has 
uh, very differing views on those predictions from what you've heard from Laura. We'll get his take on it. and We might bounce back and hear Laura's response to him as well. Um, if you're hanging on the phones, Derek, Andrew, Chris, Neil, Tony and others, we're pretty rammed on this one. The question I threw out at the beginning, are you more convinced about a climate emergency? You heard the world leaders yesterday. You've just heard Laura there. She's a former Olympic uh, sailor and she's, in addition to that, a spokesperson for Extinction Rebellion. What do you make of what you've just heard? 0344 1000. It's half past one now. News headlines. Online and on your smart TV.